Hello and welcome to High School Soccer on WOSN. Alongside Brady Overholt, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we're in Shawnee for a regional semifinal between the Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans and the Riverdale Falcons. Pleasure to be with you this evening, and Brady, we get to this point in the playoffs, and generally not much separating each team on paper, but in this case, we've got number two in the state and a team that is 19 and one in Ottawa Glendor. Yeah, they they've come in on a you know streak. They only have one loss all year to D1 Perry Perrysburg Powerhouse. So yeah, they, they they've really got their schedule uh, loaded lately, and they're competing with all those big schools. So and Riverdale knocking off Bluffton 1-0. Over the weekend, a big win for them as they avenged a loss from early in the season, a one nothing loss to those Lady Pirates. And Riverdale, wearing the white uniforms, have the ball currently. They start with Shea Berger, Eden Morris, Eden Barnes, Kendall Rawl, Mariah Bonham, Kennedy Phelps, Marissa Bonham, Chloe Powell, Miranda Miller, Allison Woodruff, and in goal, it's Angelina Sierra. Now the Titans in attack down the right side. That's Bree Douglas. Sending it up top to Mackenzie Record. We'll get you those starters here in a moment. That ball will go out, and it'll be the first corner of the evening. And it will go to the Titans, who start with McKenna Seifker, Carly Brinkman, Delaney Dooling, Bree Douglas, Mackenzie Record, Marissa Brown, Savannah Record, Liv Grothaus, Micah Aldrich, Megan Horstman, and Carson Erford in goal. This is Bree Douglas setting it down for the Titans, the leader on this team in assists. This one's low to the top of the box. Titans bring it down. They try a shot from deep, and it's off the keeper's hands. But she is able to grab it. That's Angelina Sierra, but a good start for the Titans. Yeah, and you know this, it's, little, it's going to be slick, slick tonight, and, and one of the first games that these girls are playing in actual cold, cold temperatures. It's been really nice up till, up till this week. So Titans doing what they like to do, getting it out wide to their playmaker, Douglas, as she dribbles in. Douglas to the top. That's Aldrich. Aldrich was featured as an Athlete of the Week earlier this season. Now OG with some speed up the left side. They try to cut it back, but the defense there, nice job by, I believe that's Eden Barnes on the far side, although I will say we're pretty high up in this Shawnee press box, and some of those numbers on the far side are a bit hard to see. Yeah, Shawnee's got the, the new football stadium, so we're over here uh, on turf instead of at their actual soccer stadium. So I saw some cars pulling in there on my way, not, not realizing it was maybe over at the football stadium tonight. And another deep shot. This one's blocked, but the Titans get it in the box. They try a shot. That one's blocked. That's Chloe Powell in there on defense as Riverdale able to drive it away. But a Shawnee, or excuse me, an OG throw. We'll have to sort that out with the big SHS in the middle of the field spanning about 20 yards long. Yeah, um, McKenna tried to get a shot off there, and they, they definitely have to contain her. Uh, she's first team all league, 31 goals this year. So she's their, their, she's their scorer, and then Aldridge and Wrecker are right behind her with the with uh, goals as well, and Douglas feeding them all those assists. So a corner from the other side. Be a left-footed in swinger. This one a little bit further than the last. Gets to the top of the box. Both teams trying to get possession. Now it's Shawnee up top. I'm sorry, it's Ottawa Glendorf. I will get that straight at some point. <laughs> this one dropped off for Douglas. Douglas back to Savannah Wrecker. And they're just going to drop it all the way back. And that's just a nod to the, their confidence in their back line and their defense. This team great from back to front. Well, they just moved the ball around uh, so well. And, and they've been playing some of their, their games Have they've been playing this year on the football field to get that turf concept, and, you know, especially getting to the state tournament so often these past few years where they know they're going to be on turf. So they've really adapted well to play a quick game compared to a lot of the local schools. And that was Micah Aldrich with the deep <laughs> shot. Rolls into the hands of Sierra, who sends it to midfield right back to Aldrich. But Riverdale able to get possession on the near side. You mentioned the field and perhaps different dimensions. What some people don't know about soccer is that there are – parameters but there aren't necessarily guidelines in terms of how wide and how long the field can be so the dimensions can vary from field to field this one is about as big as it can be eight, 118 yards long by 75 yards wide now i'm told the actual soccer field across the street is just about a foot or two wider and maybe two feet longer so really similar dimensions right. that 
you see on most fields? Yeah, most most are similar. We, we, we when I was coaching in in the WBL, the one school we always would go to, Salinas was always the one that was so small. And, and, and you know that is something that the kids have to adapt to. And and, and Riverdale's is a, a is a hair smaller as well. So OG OG's a little more used to maybe playing in this width, this depth, and uh, might be in a bit of advantage to them playing on turf, which they're more accustomed to as well. Titans trying to work down the left side. Riverdale knocks it away. So the Titans will grab it, boot it to that back line of the Falcons. Riverdale 10, five and five this season. And Shawnee trying to get around the defense. It goes out and it's just cleared away by Riverdale. So the Titans will have a, another corner. It's their third of the evening. Douglas lines it up. Four Titans on the back post. This one sent on the ground. They keep going to that the top of the box. So far, it's registered a shot on goal, but ultimately nothing in the back of the net. Your scoreboard tonight, by the way, sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio. This one goes all the way up the touchline and out of play on the near side. Well, Riverdale's done a good job. The one thing OG's done all year is right away they come out attacking hard, and if you can withstand that first three, four minutes and you just keep yourselves in it, unfortunately, a lot of teams have gotten down so early so quick, and and it just isn't, you know, just so hard, too hard to get back with such a quality team that Ottawa has this year. The Falcons with possession briefly. They have foul at midfield, but the referee says play on. Riverdale back with it, but... No numbers forward, so as soon as they get the ball near the back line of Shawnee, they're closed off. Good job by central defender Megan Horstman there knocking it away. Yeah, the, the front front seven or six for Ottawa is so good and play together so well that it really allows them to keep those four defenders back. And, and, and to be honest, they don't always get a ton of action. But. Great shot from deep, 30 yards out, knocked away by the goalkeeper. But how about that shot from Marissa Bonham? She is the leading scorer on this team with 10 goals on the year. That's that's how you. I mean, if you're going to want to want to play with this team and, and, and compete, that's that's what you want, you have to do. You, you know, maybe try some of the. She hasn't had many shots against her all year, so g good heads up play by Riverdale with a deep shot that really tested uh, Ottawa there and gave Riverdale a corner kick opportunity as well. Fun stat for you in the 20 matches that the Titans have played this year. They've given up an average of 0.3 goals per match. 0.3. That's 0.3. <laughs> well, I th think besides the uh, besides the Perrysburg match where they they lost one to four to one of the top teams in D1, they've only given up two other goals throughout the entire season, and 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 one of those was to. Another D1 powerhouse, Anthony Wayne. So, That's right. So they're playing a tough schedule and 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 have still just, just been incredible this year. They work it to the outside. Here's Douglas. Douglas between two defenders has it knocked away. It'll go back to the Titans as it falls to Savannah Wrecker. That might be what Riverdale has to do for most of the evening. If they get possession deep in the Titans scoring third, just clear it out, try to reset. You see another one where they slide over. This ends up being a nice pass up the right side. OG trying to get back to it, but it goes out of play. Riverdale throw on the far side. Well, and that was a, you know, I don't think Carson uh, Erford gets mentioned so much just from being the goalie, but that was a great play by her too. She was, you know, uh, she was ready for that and made a great save, but something she's not quite used to the past uh, 19 games this year. No question. That one goes out of play again. It stays with Riverdale. So the ball goes all the way to the back line, grabbed by Megan Horstman. She tries to play a diagonal up to Bree Douglas. It's taken away by Riverdale. They keep it in play. Now Aldrich. Able to knock it away. That's actually Savannah Wrecker, excuse me. It's with Douglas. 
Douglas sending it down the right and out of play looking for Mackenzie Recker. Now a Riverdale substitution. With that, we'll step aside 30 minutes to go here in the first half. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Tonight's match is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Just under 30 minutes to play in the first half of tonight's regional semifinal on WOSN. The Titans of Ottawa Glandorf locked up with the Falcons of Riverdale. Titans working it up the left side, but the Riverdale defense there. They keep it in play. No, they don't. It does go over the line. Cold night here in Northwest Ohio. We had great weather last week for some of the early playoff games. And now it looks like we had a ball go over the line on the far side. Like so a throw for throw. Riverdale. Yep. But now today we had our first snow, a little dusting, and came down hard for a minute. But it has cleared up, so it's just a frigid night with a nice, cool breeze across the pitch. Yeah, the, this, this, you know, this, we've been pretty spoiled this fall. I, I don't. It's been a long time since I can think of how nice it was up in up till regionals. Now, all of a sudden, though, it just went from 60s, 70s last week to uh, low, uh, low, low 30s, high 20s this week with some scattered uh, snow as I was coming in today. The field looks fantastic, this new turf here at Shawnee. They've done such a nice job raising money and improving their facilities here in Shawnee Township. Well, and that's what a lot of these schools have switched to turf. I know seven of the ten schools down in WBL are with turf. And and uh, a lot of those uh, have strong, good stock soccer stadiums too. So Shawnee uh, themselves don't play here much. Uh, this, uh, they, they, they play at their soccer field, but... As we get farther in the tournament, that that turf is really uh, what what the OHSA wants to see, and, and definitely what you're going to be playing on in Columbus. So, and how hard is that? I know you, you were a coach, and I'm sure your team played on, on grass for the most part. How is it? How hard is it to switch from a grass field to a turf field? Uh, it, it's a lot for teams that don't play. That's one. Here's a deep shot. Sorry to. Cut nope. you off there. It goes wide. Please continue. That's one. That's one gripe. A lot of the uh, smaller areas always had because because a lot of the Cincinnati's, the Columbus's, the Cleveland's have been playing on turf a lot of you know throughout the season and you know you will get to you know the Columbus and they're used to that where a lot of our schools were not uh, just such a faster pace. The ball moves so much quicker and, and reaction time has to be so much better. So there is an advantage for teams that play on turf throughout the year and. Luckily, I think more and more schools are moving towards that. Um, I, don't, I guess I don't know. Luckily, if you want to talk injuries and stuff as sure. you're in the NFL, but but more schools are are used to that, and, and it's kind of closed that gap of uh, making it better on these bigger bigger schools that are are always playing on turf. Don't mention turf to Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> right. That conversation won't go well. Here come the Titans, getting it to the front line, but. Riverdale again there, kind of packing things in at the back. They've got four defenders on a back line, but a defender or two packed right in front of that. Making it tough for these Titans to get through. Yeah, and, and honestly, it hasn't worked for anyone else this year. So so I see what Riverdale's doing. They're playing their four back with almost like a double stopper in front. Um, obviously, it gives up on their chances offensively, but most teams aren't holding OG whatsoever. Uh, so, so if you can can get a couple shots like they had earlier on and in a corner kick or two and get something in, it, it could work for you. Not that you ever play for a 0-0 tie, but a tie does result in extra time in the playoffs and then ultimately into penalty kicks. So you can give yourself a chance if you can hold the other team scoreless, even if your team can't punch it into the back of the net. Now Aldrich closed off by three defenders, had to pass it away, and it goes right to Riverdale. Now they try to work it up the left. Well, yeah, and as you mentioned earlier, it's no secret. Uh, this whole area knows the quality of program OG has, and, and Riverdale's coach well, and, you know, that that could be their plan going in, and they know they have very small room for error, and, and, and 
again, I don't think any other planes have worked through for all the teams recently against OG. So, so, so thus far, we're 15 in and still 0-0, which isn't always the case when teams are playing OG. And again, Riverdale pushing numbers backward. They actually had seven defenders as soon as Shawnee got to within 40 yards. I'm sorry, the tight, oh, Ottawa Glandorf. I did it again. You need to just pinch me every time I do it. <laughs> well, you can definitely tell they have one girl that's dropped that's just uh, Mark and McKenna. Uh, and and I'm, I'm sure we'll see that throughout the night. Um, Douglas trying to get around the edge. Finds a little bit of space. She's closed off nicely by Mariah Bonham. Now Douglas gets the cross through. Knocked down by Riverdale, cleared away, but that is blocked at the top of the box for Shawnee and another nice closeout by the Falcons, and I said Shawnee <laughs> once again. So we're going to get there, folks. Just going to take a minute. Yeah, and, and you mentioned, you know, they're they're marking uh, McKenna Seifker, but, but but the problem is OG is just so so strong all over. Uh, eight players, all league this year, uh, player of the year, and and, and uh, Aldrich and, and Seifker and Rec are both first team as well. So. So there's just many more threats than just one. So you, you worry about one, there's a couple others that are right there that can also score and or assist. And the Ottawa Glandorf Titans win a corner kick. I believe it's their fourth of the match. OG with well, they bring four all, on the back post. Yeah, they actually bring all five, five. together now. Yep, One girl marking the keeper and the rest in. This one gets through everybody toward the goal. It's in the back of the net. Does it count? It does. Goal to the Titans with 23-43. And the goal sponsor this evening is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Well, and that's one you're probably a little bit sad upset about if you're Riverdale from, from how you've played this first 15 because that, that just almost looked, looked broken. It wasn't – no one cleared it out. It was just kind of a, a high high ball that just kind of snuck in the back there. So here, though, is where OG really capitalizes. Riverdale can't, can't give up another one. they got to continue to play strong how they were and try to get back in this. We'll be right back after this one nothing. Titans on top. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Back underway here in Shawnee, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans with a 1-0 lead on that Structure Outdoor scoreboard. Riverdale Falcons trying to answer that, but it's to the Titans' back line. Well, and that's what they do so, so great. They... Once they get one, they can instantly have three, four, five. Uh, I know when Elida played them, it got ugly real quick. And and if you if you're Riverdale, you can't afford that. You got to just keep playing here. There's a lot of soccer left, and some opportunities hopefully arise for them to keep themselves in this. That throw either came in and out or never made it in. So Riverdale will have a throw on the far side. Substitution made by Riverdale. Give it right back to the inbounder. Speaking of inbounder, almost basketball season as <laughs> girls basketball in the area has started up. Boys basketball starts this weekend. It's hard to believe we're already almost all the way through the fall season. Now Aldrich tried a deep shot or possibly a diagonal pass either way off target and out for a goal kick. Yeah, girls started Friday, and I guess we're in November November tomorrow. So, yeah, yeah you're right. This once set November and December hits, the teacher side of me sees the breaks and the, the right. light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I was looking at the calendar today. I teach at Bluffton University, and we have four weeks left in our semester. Wow. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, yeah. Seems like we just started fall season, but it, it goes quick. Each year seems to go quicker and quicker. Here's another shot from the Titans. This one goes up and over. But still putting pressure on Riverdale. 
are the Titans of Ottawa Glandorf. I'm going to say that over and over again until I get it <laughs> right permanently. And the, the one thing that does here, we, we mentioned Riverdale's not, not necessarily packing in, but playing quite a few girls deep. It then does make it so hard for, for them to get any type of attack on offense just from from basically playing a one versus four up top there. You saw Riverdale on that possession just kick it out to get their defense back as the Titans were pressuring, and you still see that pressure. Brady alluded to, now cleared away. Titans get it back only momentarily. Good job tracking back, getting that ball. Don't have the number for you, but either way, good offense by the Falcons. It's number nine, Brooke Durenberger. Well, Brooke's the one you see kind of playing as that target player up front there. And Falcons, some space. It's closed off quickly and pass to no one as the Titans able to come up and clean it up. It's McKenna Seifker up top, pressuring that back line now. Riverdale with possession, outside. Still making a run. Now the pass to Durenberger, takes a heavy touch, able to keep it. But now the Titans clean it up. The clearance is deflected off of Riverdale, but now ultimately Back 40 yards out. This one crossed into the box. No one there. Aldrich trying to find some space. She can't. Good job up top by Mariah Bonham. Riverdale still with it. Now they drop it into space. It's Chloe Powell. Yeah, good little possession by here, by them here. And this is where you'd want to try to try to get a little risky, maybe push up a little more into that offensive attack to get more than just two or three up front. But one. great run from Aldrich sends it outside. Here's a touch, looking for a cross, but cleared away by the Falcons. And sorry that I cut you no. off there. No, the one the, the one thing Ottawa does so well uh, compared to a lot of other of these other girls teams is. That, that their their midline just just contains and can stop that attack by most other teams. Where, to be honest, the defense doesn't have to do as much. Nothing against the defense. They just that middle is so quick and so fast that they're the ones stopping that attack usually, and, and allows the defender to just kind of hold back and clear back up and start their start their attack right over. And a whistle blown. Be a Riverdale throw. So that ball went over the line and. Another substitute ready to check in. One nothing on the structure scoreboard. A goal off a corner for Ottawa Glandorf at the 23-43 mark of this half. Didn't catch a number. I'll try to find out who they credited the goal to at halftime. And you knew if, at one point with already four or five go, uh, corners, if you keep giving those OG, one's eventually going to get in. So Titans substituting at a pretty high rate here. Which another testament to how great this program is, how many players they can send in that they trust in a big game like this. Another OG throw into the box. Cleared away. Two players give chase. The first one there is Kendall Rawl. This ball played up the line, but out of reach of everybody. Out for a goal kick. Yeah, you mentioned that that large bench Ottawa has, and they're on their fourth year in a row of just kind of controlling. And all these girls that were freshmen are now seniors, and some of the younger girls have just also kind of fell right in line with that, those winning ways we've just seen from them. That, I said goal kick, it ends up being a corner and a well-played corner at that. Here's a shot from deep and great job by Sierra getting a hand on it and even better, batting it away from an offensive player that was bearing down into space so she could grab it. R real great stop. I mean, that was a hard hit, a good solid strike uh, by Ottawa to, and heads up play by the, def by the goalie, not only to stop it, but then move it away from the girl coming at her. Now the Falcons get into their scoring third, but they give it away. Mm -hmm. 
Mariah Bonham. Again, that pressure you talked about. Bonham's a great player, but just had nowhere to go with the soccer ball. And now almost a mistake by the Riverdale yeah. back line. They had Maya Herringhouse bearing down, but they're able to get it away. Tell Bonham just happy to have some space right there, but ultimately Titans close it off. Well, yeah, that's that middle. You, you see that back line can just kind of hold back, and these middle four just are so strong and work together so well, and I think that's been the difference these past few years with the, the quality we've seen from Ottawa, and it, it's hard to it's hard to compete with. It's at times you think they got about three or four more girls on the field than every team they're playing. So Bonham will take this throw. It's Emily O'Flaherty heading to the sideline. Bonham over the top. And Titans able to clear it away once again. So another throw for Bonham. And a substitute again checking in. 15 minutes to go in the half. We'll step aside with the substitution. We'll be right back after this. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Welcome back to Shawnee High School, where the Ottawa Glendorf Titans hold a 1-0 lead over the Riverdale Falcons in this regional semifinal. Evan Skilleter, Brady Overholt with you. Jacob Hot Dog O'Neill outside on the camera on this cold evening. Appreciate his effort in setting things up and bringing you the pictures. And Riverdale staying, you know, again, that, that attack after that first goal, they, they've contained. Uh, OG's controlled a little more than Riverdale, obviously, but they're, they're hanging with them here and, and uh, giving themselves a chance, which is all you can ask for against a, a program like Ottawa. Riverdale trying to work it up the right side. It goes out of play. Last touch by the Titans. You see a little bit of a push from Riverdale, about three or four girls up in that attack now, and I think that's going to be, unfortunately for them, they're going to have to take some of these risks, otherwise they'll just get shut down. Bonham has it, and the Titan defense there once again, able to clear it away. It was Megan Horstman ultimately clearing it. Good defense on the right side, though, by Savannah Recker as well. This ball up the left side, and it goes out of play. Titans will have a throw with 13-20 and counting to go in the first half. Still 1-0. And you do see Riverdale pushing a little more. Uh, those two girls that were playing a little deeper are, are kind of at that midfield area now to try, to try to just give them some type of opportunity, and they're moving their mids up. Riverdale drops it back. Central defense. It's Eden Barnes. Ball played up the right side. No one there. Titans will throw. And that's that little just quicker pace we talked about and being on turf here. And, and Riverdale we played there quite a few times. And that's that's a totally different uh, field with the thicker thicker grass. And just the, the, the speed of the ball is just so much different for some of these girls to get used to as we see that ball go out of bounds and turn over. Player goes down, nothing called. It ends up going out for a Titan throw. Again, the Titans, 19 and one this season. Number two in Division Three. Only loss was to Division One Perrysburg. Riverdale 10, 5, and 5. It's a big win over the Bluffton Lady Pirates on Saturday. Beat them 1-0 at Steinmetz Field in Bluffton. Well, and Riverdale has. They've, they've always been that team that uh, uh, you can just see them, them get better through the year. And, and they always seem to find a way to get themselves in the in the districts and or even regionals. And a really solid program uh, the past 10, 15 years that they've had over there. And, 
unfortunately for them, they're running into a, a team like OG every year uh, in a regional semi game. Seems to be the story for almost every Division Three team around here, right? Right, yeah. You might have a couple big wins, but you're going to run into this buzzsaw at some point. But like you said just a bit ago, Riverdale hanging tough, staying in this one. Well, for a while it was Liberty Benton. They dropped a – they actually went up a division to Division Two. So Liberty Benton was a team everyone had to go through, and they were making runs at state. And you finally think you lose them, and oh, instead, <laughs> instead OG comes and – has the type of runs they've had the last four years. Two consecutive runs to the state final. Both times falling short though, trying to get over that hump for coach Michelle Mag. It has been a bit of a change of play, though. I will tell, say Riverdale's, it's been back and forth quite a bit more, and actually a few more attacks from Riverdale these last five, eight minutes than uh, from Ottawa. If you can get to the half, down right. from one nothing, or even tying at 1-1, one -one, you're going to feel really good about yourself. And, and again, we mentioned that that goal was even, not that, obviously you don't want to take anything away from Ottawa, but it was one of almost just uh, everyone in the box and somehow it popped in and, and got by, so... Possession back and forth. Titans with it currently. They try to play it up the right line. It was Emma Herringhouse, but not able to complete that pass. Titans get it back. Good composure from this defense of Riverdale. At this point, they're playing with about eight girls back on defense every time the Titans get close to that final third. And, and I think that's a smart move by Riverdale that they know they're only down one and they the second goal is the one they just can't afford to give up. So as you mentioned, if they can get in tying it up or one o two or one one zero at half, that allows them to kind of change their play in the second half and might get let them get a little riskier as the game moves on into the second half. More pressure in midfield for Riverdale wins them a possession back, although that's thwarted by the defense and Savannah Wrecker. Titans working it up the right once again. That's under the foot of Emma Herringhouse and cleared away by Riverdale. Two more substitutes checking in from the far side. Mariah Bonham, Bonham excuse me, will step off as will Kendall Rawl. So a break for those two key players. Bonham with 10 goals, three assists this year. Kendall Rawl with five goals and an assist. Titans trying to get a goal here. Here's Bree Douglas. Aldrich at the top, drags it back, pops it down the right side, didn't have a player making a run. In fact, her teammate Mackenzie Recker was trying to get back on side as that pass went over the top. Well, we always talk about Ottawa's offense and all the goals and all the assists, but three of these girls on defense and their keeper are are all league players as well so mm. so you know the quality isn't is spread all all the way around there the Hortsman and and Brinkman and uh Wrecker all all being all league as well and f only f I think four of the Titan starters are seniors as well. I might have to do that math once again at halftime. Yeah, you, you think a girl like McKenna or uh, Brinkman are, are, are seniors just with the way they play, but no, they are. They're only juniors, so a lot of these girls are coming back, and I think they'll continue to be a strong force in our area. And well, they always reload, too, right? You, you have a couple players that are great that graduate. I look like offside, but the flag stays down out for a Titan throw. A couple great players that graduate, and you just fill in with some new great players. Last year, Carson Erford played in the field as a freshman. As after a goalkeeper graduated, she moved back, played goalkeeper, and has obviously done a tremendous right. job this year. Like you said, playing behind a really good defense, but still, 0.3 goals per game is not a bad average. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, just alone, just knowing that you're going to have a goalie like that for for two more years after this year, so. Yeah, they definitely reload and 
just just the quality programs out of Ottawa's in, in general, not just soccer, but you see the girls' volleyball and, and soccer, just good programs over there. Bree Douglas sets up another corner. This one a little tighter to the goal, headed down. Here's a shot off the crossbar and behind for a goal kick. Another great chance off a corner for the Titans, but another miss as it stays 1-0 on the structure scoreboard. Yeah, and that had no chance of being saved if that was a little lower because that was a rocket, and I don't think anyone was anticipating where that one was going. So a little bit of a break there for Riverdale with only five left because that, that, that's something you just can't – got to get to halftime within one. Riverdale clear this one. Aldrich steps up to take it away. Casually dribbles through the defense, tries to put it on the back post. A good cross. That ball is still in play as the goalkeeper comes out and Angelina able to knock it away. I think she thought that was going to go out for a goal kick. Titans try to get it back in play quickly with her off the line. They play it to the top and a great defensive play right there by Allison Clark, realizing that they were in trouble. She came back and knocked that pass away. Still some trouble on the right side and knocked out for another corner. Yeah, I think the girls thought it, some girls thought it was going to be out the outside back. <laughs> Luckily, goalie was heads up and, and got it out. The, and uh, then the defender played the ball out to not give up that goal with just a few minutes left here. It'll be Douglas again. 45 seconds. This one middle of the box, up and over everyone's head once again. Pretty well-timed run, but the ball just a little bit too high. I can't get the number. One of them was, yeah, about a couple inches too short for the header she was coming in and try to finish strong there so now four and a half to play pass goes to midfield Aldrich knocks it up in the air brought down by Atley Vent that ball goes out of play Titan throw on the near side and another substitution dueling checks in Herringhouse checks out Delaney dueling a starter Back into this game, Douglas drops it back and that pass scuffed wide. Riverdale throw. Fent sends it in, nice one touch pass there from Marissa Bonham. Titans with it back, nice pass to Douglas through two defenders. Douglas trying to get around the outside, now just an easy pass forward. Good contact there, but the cross comes up, and it crossed the line before the cross, so it ends up being a goal kick. But, you know, some people don't realize it. Soccer is a contact sport. Right, right. And that was good, clean contact. Yeah, you saw the uh, – Wrecker stayed on you, her feet. Sorry. You, could, you, could, no, you could hear some OG fans below us wanting want the foul called. But, but yeah, I, I agree. I think that's a good no call, and, and, and we're, here, we're in regionals here. You know, let them play. Score remains 1-0 with three minutes and change remaining in the first half. Aldrich drops it all the way back. They switch over to the right with Douglas. Douglas nowhere to go. She drops it back. Now Mackenzie Recker. Knocked away from her. Ends up with Allison Woodruff of Riverdale. Her pass goes under the foot of Allison Clark and everyone will retreat. Ball stays in play. It's with Woodruff. Knocked away by OG. Ball stays in play. Now knocked out. And it looked like perhaps a Riverdale ball, but the referee much closer than us. So it stays with the Titans. Yeah, and, and you see Riverdale getting everyone back. And I think, yeah, you need to do that here. Can't can't give up one this with this little of time left going into half. Uh, just keep yourselves within one and, and get a game plan at halftime to come out second half to get a goal and, and put yourself right back in a chance to win. Douglas tries to cross, knocks it off a Riverdale defender, so they'll win another corner. They've only registered one goal off corners, but this is about seven or eight for them, and each one has resulted in a pretty decent look. Let's see what they can do here with Douglas. Yeah, and this is something next second half you get you can't keep giving all these up because they will get another one. Douglas is cross, knocked away. They will and get another. Right, right here. 
think of your Ottawa, you kind of take your time here and get a good set piece and see if you can sneak a second one in going into half. Here's another one underneath everybody. Ball to the outside. Here's a shot that goes off of Riverdale, and it will go out for another corner. So one minute and change. They'll try it from the other side as the Titan faithful come alive. Looking for a two-goal cushion heading into the half. Nice high ball, top of the box. Brought down toward the goal. Another broken play oh. as the ball goes up and over for a goal kick. Aldrich had the look but wasn't able to capitalize. Well, and you see they're playing, and that's something, again, at halftime you got to talk about if you're Riverdale. One girl marks the goalie and kind of creates habit there, and the other four or five just crash. And basically between the 18 and the 6, they're everywhere. And, and Riverdale got lucky there to because that, that was another hard hit shot by Ottawa. Goal kick to the outside. I think I'm playing it up and out if I'm Riverdale and getting to halftime. Ten seconds on the clock. Ball goes out, and that should do it. For the first half, the structure outdoor scoreboard reads 1-0. After a Lee's Famous Recipe chicken goal at the 23-43 mark, we will head to halftime and have the second half for you after this. It's high school regional semifinal soccer on WOSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Welcome back to Shawnee High School where the Ottawa Glendorf Titans are up 1-0 to zero over the Riverdale Falcons in a regional semifinal. The one goal came at the 23-43 mark after a corner was headed in by Micah Aldrich. That's Aldrich's 22nd goal of the year. Evan Skilleter, Brady Overholt with you. And, hey, this game's exciting. It's only one nothing. and if you're Riverdale and you, you look and you see that Sean, that the Titans of Ottawa Glandorf average five and a half goals a game and only give up .3, you have to feel pretty good about a one-goal deficit. Yeah, they, they've kept themselves alive in this, and I think, uh, you know, obviously you would like to have a goal, but but if you're going to go into halftime with a – you got a fighting chance here, and, and that, to me, it allows you to – eventually you, you are going to try something. You're going to push a little, few more girls up and get a little riskier because you got you got to score to find a way to get to overtime and, and tie this thing up. And the Titans get an early corner. We talked about it right before halftime, but – these Titans have made Riverdale sweat on these corners all evening. There's another nice ball right in the center. Goes off the crossbar and eventually cleared away by Riverdale. Yeah, and that's what we talked about, you know, as you mentioned before half. That's something you got to find a way to eliminate because uh, they're up to double digits here, I think, on corner kicks up to about 10 or so. And, and, and just the, that attack they show is going to eventually pull through and give, get them another goal. So if I'm Riverdale trying to eliminate those corners. The Falcons trying to work it up the right side, chasing it down is Marissa Bonham, the leading scorer for this Riverdale team. She has it taken away. Possession pinged back in fourth, and it will stay with Riverdale, working it down the right side. Good looking pass. This one across to the top of the box. Gets all the way past everyone and ends up with Mariah Bonham. Bonham with a defender on her back, forced to track backward. Now lays it off for a teammate. Ball taken away. Well, and there was just a little bit of an off touch there by uh, Bonham over there. and She could have got herself a good touch and possibly a, a cross or a shot with her, her left over there. Again, they've only had one or two, and the one, one was close that first half, so... I don't think they're going to break inside the 18 often. So, so to be able to get something, it might be around the 20, 20, 15 yard line. Now Riverdale takes possession away from the Titans. Titans take it right back. Here's Aldrich, commander of the midfield. 
Sends it down the left side. Good looking pass. Two players giving chase. It's Delaney dueling for the Titans, trying to get there first, but it's knocked away by Riverdale. Ball sent back into dueling. Dueling turns right into a defender who knocks it out for another throw. That time it was Chloe Powell sliding over and knocking it away. Now back in for the Titans. Well, all back off of Riverdale. Well, and you see, yeah, Riverdale has all 10 of their 11 back there. Uh, and, and, and again, that makes it hard on their target for any type of offense. But if, if they want to stay, if they want to stay in this game, they they obviously can't give up another goal. So again, we'll, we'll see as this game progresses. At some point, it's got to make that decision to push a little more, more and, and and go for uh, go for a goal to keep themselves into this and get it to overtime. It was an offside call against Ottawa Glandorf. So. Free kick for Riverdale. Aldrich stepped up, and we've seen her take a couple. I don't know if they're passes or shots, but either way, we've seen her do that a couple right. times. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, yeah I, I think they might be for that across to the outside wing, but just a couple of those yeah, easy turnovers, and 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 you don't want to. You don't want to just kind of let the clock run if you're Riverdale. But at the same point, if if you can just find a way. To, to to get it to get a, get yourselves a goal and get it to overtime that's when really anything can happen and and, and it play might be let's get to shootouts if you're Riverdale and, and see if we can win that way sure sure now a corner another high one top of the box drops down could be dangerous and dropped back and here's another long shot right toward goal but Angelina Sierra knocks it down Good job by her. We've seen her do some good work back as the goalkeeper tonight. Yeah, you have to give her credit because those are there, there's some about three or four real strong shots that have come right at her, and she's ready for them and has kept her team in this. And now the Titans trying to get it down the right. A little too much pace behind that one as it's out for a goal kick. There's another one that just a little too much. They're just a little off on that, on those crosses to their outside, outside uh, midfielder there. Here's another deep shot as Aldrich is trying to challenge the goalkeeper right now. Sierra able to catch that with both arms, no problem. Yeah, and if you're Riverdale, um, I, I think that's, the, the less of two evils here, if you take allow those deep shots, uh, not as much hurt as the the three or four girls attacking up front. Ball goes behind for a goal kick. Another header right back toward the free kick taker. Well, and this is exactly how OG started the first half, and Riverdale withstood the the, uh, the five, seven minutes of attack and kept themselves in it. So uh, it looks as if thus far maybe the same game plan, keep themselves in it and then get a little push as, as time uh, uh, runs down here in the second half. So a Titan throw on the far side as Riverdale tries to claw back into this game. It's been all Titans, as Brady just alluded to. Here in the second half, that ball goes out of play. Now the Titans trying to get behind the defense. They knock it off of Riverdale, I believe. Looks like another corner is going to be coming. And we're already at three or four this half. I've lost track already, but we are in double digits. I can yeah, almost definitely guarantee double digits that overall for the game. So Douglas again sets it down. The corner taker this evening from the right side. It's another high one right in the middle. Not it away by Bonham. That was Mariah Bonham. And you have seen uh, their corners. They ha definitely have a different approach. First half was five or six girls, uh, deeper balls towards the 18. You can tell that's something Coach Mag changed up at halftime because now they're those floaters right around the six, and, and they're going for the ones right in. And, and, and to be honest, that's probably 
because that's how they scored the first one. It was more of a higher ball that just kind of looped in. So the seven or eight from first half deeper didn't work. So a little bit of a newer approach second half here. Here's a shot off the side, off the bar, or excuse me, the post. Looked like Keeper had it, but yeah, they kept playing. And wow, lucky, because that, that ricocheted hard off the post. Now, you said earlier that uh, they've been just trying to drop the ball in the box. You've been around high school soccer for a long time. How many goals are scored by a loose ball just being in front of the goal and somebody getting a foot right, or a toe right. or a heel it, or it, it, all a the knee time. on it, a it, broken it, play resulting in yes, a goal? Yes, it, it happens quite a bit, and especially nothing, not, not the difference between boys and girls, but especially girls because there seems sometimes those defenders aren't reacting quick enough and any type of toe poke, you're right. You know, I've told – Girls, well, we're not, you know, they learn from a youth level. We're not allowed to use our toe. I don't care how you score. If you got to poke <laughs> right. the ball in with your toe at this level, the, I'm, we're, you're not going to get in trouble, I promise. Because there are times for, yeah, just that reaction type. If you put the ball into the box, you're dangerous. And right. the Titans tonight have put the ball into the box often. They've looked dangerous all evening, but only one goal to show for it. Can they change that here? That ball crosses the line and out for another goal Ooh, yeah. kick. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give credit to Riverdale's goalie. She has, she's really playing a tough match. I think that last one might have got her banged up a little bit. You can uh, looks almost like it was a little bit of a collision there between them, or or even the ball coming at her so hard. It's a cold evening, right? That ball can right. sting the hands. Ball knocked away off the Titans. Throw from near the corner. Riverdale tries to take all ten yards. Now they're asking her to back up. She sends it down the right or down the left side, excuse me. Titans grab it, cross it into the box, brought down, makes one miss. Here's a shot. It's blocked by the Falcons and out for another corner. Good footwork inside the box there. I believe it was Delaney Dueling. Well, if they can continue to withstand this, it just it's a very, very risky to kind of play play this many on defense and just keep giving up these attempts by OG, for OG. That one almost off ahead toward goal, but it gets over everyone. Riverdale keeps it in play. A little bit of space on the right side, but it's taken away quickly. Here's another cross into the box, and that one fumbled by Sierra, but she's able to fall on top. Well, and, and again, I feel we keep bringing it up, but it, uh, no game plans have worked for most teams this year, so... So we, she, they've, they've went through 10 minutes. If they can get through another 10 and another 10, and, and you can get yourselves down to about 10 minutes left in the game, that can totally change your mindset if you're Riverdale. Now you go after it. Uh, and you kind of had nothing to lose. Um, but it's risky for this next 20 minutes if you can get to that point. No question. I think for a Titan team that hasn't felt a lot of pressure through the season and through the playoffs, closer you can keep this, the more right. out of their element they are as well. Right, right. And, and, and I mean, again, it's – I don't know at this point if you're thinking, are we going to score two goals? No, but can we keep them at only one and, and find a way to, you know, this last ten minutes of the game, if it's still only 1-0, we, now we attack and push because we have nothing to lose and set yourselves up to get to overtime. I guess that that's a pretty solid plan to get to the quality of team that you're playing against. That ball sent out for another corner. It was off of Riverdale. It was going to be a corner anyway, so they tried to knock it toward the corner and out for a throw, but not enough on it. And a corner coming up. Douglas sets it down once again. Well, now you see OG's got two girls. So, yeah, a little bit of a different format. They got two girls up in, in the box around the keeper, and now they're all attacking tight instead of staying deep. And that one right off the head of a Titan, but over – the crossbar and it's got to be a little bit frustrating too for a team used to scoring goals having all these chances and not being able to capitalize uh, right uh i i, I i'm gonna guess almost we're at maybe 15 corners yeah. uh what six or seven shots so yeah uh, and and that happens that's the that is the i guess the beauty of soccer and the disappointment of soccer because you can you can lose a game with 25 shots compared to another team's one or, or, or vice versa so um, yeah, and, at the, and at this point, if you're Riverdale, hey, it only takes one, and you're right back in this and tied up and totally changes the game. 
years ago when FC Cincinnati, who's now in the MLS, was still in USL, the second division of U.S. soccer. They made a deep run in the U.S. Open Cup, which is a, a cup where multiple different leagues play. MLS teams are in there, USL teams are in there, and it's basically like minor league teams playing professional teams. And FC Cincinnati made it to the semifinal of that tournament, knocking out multiple MLS teams, not by scoring a lot of goals, but by keeping everything at 1-1 one, one right, or 0-0 zero, right. zero and getting to penalty kicks. So it is definitely a strategy that can work, and now Riverdale working it forward trying to score. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of times you just hear the the – Pack the box type of, type of idea, but it can it can benefit a team that again let's be honest on on paper they were the under they're the, they're the underdog so you got to you know play with very slim margin of error and, and get something like that to work out for you and thus far it has it's kept them in it. Titans get it into the box, but it's cleared away by the Falcons. FC Cincinnati, of course, now in MLS and now a top three team in the Eastern Conference of MLS. Dramatic rise for them in a short amount of time. This one toward goal. And Sierra able to grab it. She's kind of struggled to catch the ball off the first bounce, but she's done a nice job tonight. Well, seven shots on goal for the Titans and only one have gone in. And yeah, and these are not yet, yeah, as you mentioned, these are not just uh, uh, any types of, of, of chip shots these are these are girl these are line drive shots coming at her and, and yeah as you mentioned as cold as it is it's almost having that bad contact when you're swinging the bat <laughs> yeah no question here's a free kick this one sent again toward goal takes a hop sierra just kicks it and sierra down after that it rolls out for a throw well you got to respect her i mean she's just keeping them in this her you know she's she's playing the defense the goalkeeper the uh, she's definitely. I, I'm going to. She's definitely touched the ball more than anyone else on the Riverdale side. They will tend to Angelina Sierra as we step aside. 25:37 on the clock. It is Titans one, Falcons zero on WOSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Limewell, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. We welcome you back. The keeper, Angelina Sierra, able to stay in the game. The throw-in went off of Riverdale and out for another corner. So we're nearing the 20 corner kick mark for the Ottawa Glandorf Titans, who lead 1-0 here in Shawnee. Bree Douglas takes for the Titans. This one's low. Knocked out of the box, but the Titans will be able to get there. And this one sails well wide and high for a goal kick. Yeah, credit to Sierra. She's, I mean, she's my MVP on, on the Riverdale side for sure right now. She's keeping them in here and keeps battling. Uh, coaches never came onto the field, so she can stay in. Uh, she's giving the, these girls a chance. Aldrich. Thought about a shot, tries a pass instead. It's taken away by the Falcons. Still 24 minutes, actually closer to 25 minutes left in this half. So Riverdale still with some time, although the Titans have dominated possession here in this game, especially the second half. Yeah, that is, you're right. That's a difference. The first half we saw a little bit. Uh, obviously, OG controlled the play a little more, but... But uh, you did see some, uh, a few attacks on the River Riverdale side, and thus far, I think we've only even had the ball down here maybe one or two times. So, throw on the far side. Douglas puts it down the line, looking for Aldrich, but it's cut out. Now a nice pass up top. This is Durenberger. Durenberger tries the back heel, but it's taken away. I think yeah, that I think, was actually Kendall Rawl there in the middle. Yeah, Pardon I think me. there was better. Yeah, maybe an option over here on this side on the run, but usually the little back heel kick doesn't, doesn't always work out the best. Substitute checks in. That was number 12, Emily O'Flaherty. Falcons looked like they were going to try to switch it to the right side, but the Titans get there first. On the near side with Emma Herringhouse. Herringhouse. Let's it go out of play, picks it up. She'll toss it in quickly for Delaney Dueling. Dueling lets it go over the head, and she's closed off, but able to get possession back. 
Dueling crosses to the top of the box. Douglas comes in. Douglas one touch pass. Here's a shot. That's wide, but a good buildup by the Titans as McKenna Seifker not able to finish. Yeah, the, the possession, you're right. The possession is just so, so, so high quality on the OG side. They just move the ball around with ease and, and just a bit, bit quicker. Just they're just they're just quicker. They've been quicker all year and and can possess and move the ball. And you can tell they're used to this fast paced uh, turf. Uh, field. Talking to their uh, athletic director a little bit at halftime. They've, the girls have. Oh, oh, and a there's shot another that one. goes in. McKenna Siefker gets the goal kick, takes a step to her right, and sends it in for Lee's famous recipe chicken goal. Yeah, that's some, yeah, again, I don't want to take anything away from Ottawa, but some of those other attempts were so, seemed so much stronger and hard hit, and that one just bounced in and slipped by. I, defenders, I think uh, I think Sierra kind of thought maybe one of her defenders was going to knock it down, and it's an unfortunate break for break for Riverdale, but again, OG just keeps pressing, and you know it's going to they're going to score. It's 20, 22 minutes, 31 seconds left as we step aside. 2-0. We'll be right back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. McKenna Siefker with the least famous recipe chicken goal at the 22 30 31 mark. And Siefker's team leading 31 goals becomes 32 for the Titans who keep the pressure on here. Well, and you mentioned between the corner kicks and, and the, the deep shots that they were taking between Seifker and Recker and Aldrich, eventually something was going to, you know, break. And that's unfortunate for Sierra. She's played a heck of a game back there. But but this OG team just hard. It's going to be hard for Riverdale to come back. Uh, I know they're only down two, but that's a tough one against this solid OG team. So now Riverdale with some work to do. How do they respond by – or after going down 2-0. Well, I, th I think you gotta you gotta decide. You know, we still see we see them basically playing ten girls back, and at some point you gotta decide. I, I guess when I was coaching, at this point, it doesn't matter. We gotta score. Um, lose, losing losing 2-0, unfortunately, is no different than losing 7-8-0. So so I mean, the only way you can stay in this, the only way you can get to overtime in a shootout, is by finding a way to score goals, which means you need more than just one target player up top. So. To me, that's something they're going to have to adjust. Titans keep it in play. It ends up going out. It's a Riverdale throw anyway. Well, and as we're talking, uh, you know, look right now, we see two Riverdale girls with, with uh, seven, what, eight OG girls back there. There's absolutely no chance. They're too strong for that. So I, I think somewhere you're going to have to adjust and move some of what I consider those holding mids on Riverdale up to the offense. Riverdale throws it in. They get another offensive player up, and they find her with some space. This is Miranda Miller. And Miller has it taken away. Good clean contact. Miller still down, and they're going to stop play with 2017 on the clock. And with that, we'll step aside as well. 2-0. Titans on top of the structure scoreboard. We'll be right back. Tonight's goal sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. 2-0 on the structure outdoor scoreboard. Goals from Micah Aldrich and McKenna Siefker of Ottawa Glandorf, and they are staring in the face of another trip to a regional final as this ball goes back into the box, and it's kicked out of play for a throw. Titans have made two consecutive runs to the state final, falling short both times. Tonight, a regional semi. Winner moves on. That one scuffed wide. Certainly not the product Marissa Brown wanted. 
on the cross. Oh well, yeah, here's where Riverdale just yeah has to, has to find some type of spark, even to get it past midfield and a little bit of little bit of possession on their offensive side. Ball popped over to the right side and Titans there. This is Maya Herringhouse. Herringhouse not able to keep it in play. A little bit of a bad touch there, just bad bounce and. Although Riverdale now throws back into pressure, so that might not be what we want to throw down towards your offensive side here. And, and maybe some more movement up this line, and, and, and can you just see the wall of blue defenders from the about midfield on, on, on forward, and it's going to be tough for them to break through that. This one taken away by OG, but taken right back by Marissa Bonham. Bonham loses possession in midfield. Ball passed up to Seifker, the goal scorer. Seifker tries to pass it back to the left. And a good idea as the defense had collapsed the middle to try to cover her. She was looking for Herringhouse on the outside, but a good job by Sierra. Yeah, good ball. I mean, most would think, oh, that was a bad shot. No, that was a pass. And, yeah, I mean, just about a yard or two off from Herringhouse making that run. Ball knocked into midfield. Titans still in possession. Now taken away and pelted forward, but only as far as Mackenzie Recker who knocks it down. Well, they just possess so well and maintain the flow of the game and all, on all aspects, really, the offensive, the defensive, the, the transition. Down the right side they go. Taken away by the Falcons, but Aldrich there. Ball brought down, knocked back, and... Almost taken away. Now it is. But as this game wears on, you're starting to see maybe some tired legs and certainly some cold bodies out there. Right. Well, and, and this back line has has really just been able to hang back. We mentioned in the first half that this midfield does so much for OG that, that allows this back line to kind of just hang back and clean anything up that gets to him. But there's not a lot that gets to him. Yeah, they're certainly not worried about an offside trap. Right. And just bring it. Well, and it looks like Aldrich is back now, a little deeper. And I, I think normally she's in the attack a bit more, but up 2-0 and, and get her to the back a little bit and kind of be that sweeper that's cleaning everything up for you. Sorry, that's Hortzman back there. There are uniform numbers on our paper in there. A little different. <laughs> uniform numbers are right next to their – the the numbers that they have to turn into OHSA, which are one off. So. That's all right. Yeah. Didn't even notice that. It's a little confusing. Yeah, it is. So, so might if we, be saying the wrong so if we said some wrong numbers, yeah, we apologize. Riverdale with a goal kick, 16-22 and counting to go here in the second half. Still 2-0 on the structure scoreboard. Here's a shot from deep and knocked over the bar by Sierra. Another nice shot from 25 yards out. Yeah, and they're just, I, I mean, they're, they're not, they won't stop, and they just keep shooting solid shots. And, again, good work by Sierra. We keep mentioning her. It seems like that's the only name we're mentioning on the Riverdale side. But, but uh, again, she's keeping them in there. They're down two, but, the, you know, the, they're within distance. They just got to find a way to get one. No matter what happens, she should be very proud of her performance this evening. As should the whole defense. I mean, really, they have been pressured so much by this OG team, especially like we said on those corners, which were probably at around 20. Another shot, this one knocked down once again. But all that action for a team that averages five and a half goals a game, only resulting in two. It's a, it's a good game for Riverdale. I'm sure they'd rather see a victory than the proverbial good game. But right, right. I mean, uh, I, you, you look at OG's uh, wins and the only teams that have even been within a, two goals are the, the D3 or the D1 schools, the Finleys, the Perrysburgs who beat them, but, and the Anthony Waynes. And, and the rest, including the whole WBL, have all been down three or more. Uh, ended up down, you know, they've beat all of them by at least that. So Riverdale, yeah, Riverdale's playing. And getting, I guess all you can ask if you're a coach is give yourselves a fighting chance and, you know, you find a way to get one, then then, then anything can happen once that, that – that two goals, the crucial point. You keep within two, you're, you're, you're within the game. But Titans make a substitution. Actually, both teams 
with substitutions as the Titans put it back into play down the right side. Afraid to say it, but I think I've worked out the Shawnee error. Don't jinx yourself, but I think you yeah, have to. We'll, we'll see what happens. Here's <laughs> uh, Aldridge here's for the Titans. Ball knocked away from her. Douglas got a foot on it. Douglas gets it back, but pass goes under her foot. Now cleared into midfield. Well, and that's the one thing I've noticed. Riverdale hasn't really adjusted at all yet, so you see those four girls back and, and two deep deep midfielders still playing back, so it does make it a little rough for their lone target player up front trying to play a 1v4. Ball pinged back and forth. Riverdale trying to work it up the right side, and again, like you said, they get to midfield, but still only one attacker up for them. Well, you can just notice that uh, right at the 50, you had OGs and t four, four, four midfielders, let alone their three defenders that were about 20 yards deeper. And uh, again, so even with two or three girls attacking, seven girls on OG side that are all laying back and just on everything, it just makes it real tough. Couple more substitutions. We've seen a lot of those tonight as well. All cleared to midfield, brought down by Mackenzie Recker. Riverdale pops it up down their right side and out for a Titan throw. Liv Grothaus picks it up. Aldrich to the outside with Dueling. Dueling passes to the back line and everyone sees it out. Yeah, just a little too, there's been a handful that have just been maybe a little too direct or, or just a yard or so off from, from getting a good cross on OG's side and a couple off the crossbars. So they've definitely had their, their uh, opportunities to make this, not, uh, uh, you know, make this not within reach of Riverdale, but Riverdale's kind of done the bend and don't break. I know they're down two, but playing against OG, that's not broke, broke yet and gives them, gives them a chance to find a way. Aldrich gets space, her shot's blocked. And goes out for another Shawnee corner. She seems to be everywhere. I'm pretty sure I just said Shawnee once again, too. So uh, you, here you were we go. safe. You were safe. <laughs> that was intentional. It's our own I'll fault. Just yeah, it it's our own fault. We, we, jinx, we jinxed fault. it. It's not our fault. It's my fault. So the Titans from OG with the corner in front of goal, and it goes in. Goal number three, it's a least famous recipe chicken goal at the 11.35 mark. And that one seems to be scored by Bree Douglas, although I cannot confirm that at the moment. Yeah, I think obviously they'll end up finding some girl on OG side to give credit to, but it looks like it almost deflected off of a defender. The announcer says Emma Herringhouse. So one way or another, that ball got into the back of the net. Yeah, it looks like it. I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was right around about the line when I think a defender might have deflected it as well. So, it's your own goal, perhaps. Either way, a third scored for the Titans, and it's now 3-0 on the structure outdoor scoreboard. Well, and right now I'm I'm moving some more girls up and and just finding a way to get three or four up in the attack because. Because at this point, it really it, more goals given up don't matter. You, you got to find a find some way to get some some type of offensive thing going here for you if you're Riverdale. Another substitution. Under 11 to play. 3-0. Titans on top. Looking to make it to another regional final. Move it from left to right. Nice pass into space. This is Herringhouse. Good touch. Herringhouse needs to cross and tries to keep it in play, but it's just a bit heavy for her. Barnes will take the goal kick. That's Eden Barnes. Another deep shot, this one knocked away. That was Eden Morris. 
Now and another high uh, shot. Yeah, that's, the, that's the deep shot that you got to watch if you're Riverdale. You don't want to, get it to totally get out of control here. Ball played left, cut out by the Falcons. Titans pressure as it goes out for a Riverdale throw. Nope, sorry, went off of Riverdale. So it's a Ottawa Glandorf Titan throw. And it looks like uh, looks like the fourth would be next day. The winner of this is playing. So Saturday Saturday game, twelve o'clock. So just kind of looking some stuff up, and that'll be the winner of tonight's other region, what's considered Region Ten game against uh, either Wayne Dale or Eastwood. And we've got a collision in the goal box. I'm not sure the referee will really worry about that too much. It looked like a collision between three players and no harm done. Riverdale trying to string together some possession, but that one cut out by Carly Brinkman. Another person, another girl on this OG team who is fantastic, does a great job for them, but doesn't get her name called very often <laughs> right, because right. she's in that back line and they don't see the ball too much. Yeah, no, Brink, Brinkman was one that was, we talked about some of those league players and she was a second team all WBL, and but you mentioned you just don't hear her name often and, and throughout the season, which nothing against any of the four and the goalie. They're all great, just just not a lot of action back there. When your team doesn't give up a goal in the conference, or maybe they gave up. I think they gave up one to St. Mary's. Right. But when you only give one, up one goal in the conference, how do you, how does your back four not get unanimous <laughs> right, first team right. honors? Right. Well, and that's Gotta something. Some that's something. Uh, Elida's coach now and I were talking about uh, er, earlier this week, and, and I think OG had nine girls on the all WBL team. You know, out of a total of maybe 45 and. They probably should have had all 11, to be honest. And and three first-team girls were all offensive players. But as you mentioned, how can those defensive players not be as well? So, Well, and I say that kind of facetiously, right, because the WBL in general has a lot of quality right, players. Right, right, yes, I didn't, yep. I want to make sure that people know I'm not taking anything away from some of those other players. In a really strong Western Buckeye League that just happens to have one of the best teams in the right. state. Well, and that's what, you, you know, uh, Anthony Wayne is a D1 powerhouse. Finley has played some of the uh, other WL schools, and uh, it, it, I don't want to say handily beat them, but 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 beat them and control them to where OG beats beats Finley. And you know, their only loss coming from quite possibly another state running team in in D Division One and in, in Perrysburg. So you just you do wonder what level of play is Perrysburg at to to control a team like OG and, and beat them four to one. Another goal kick for Riverdale as we're under seven minutes to play. That one picked off briefly by the Titans. Durenberger sends it to the outside. This is Atley Vent. The Titans, this is Bree Douglas, who's made her way over to the left side. Spending most of her time on the right side of the offense. Yeah, we've mentioned these runs that Ottawa's been making, and that's great for the soccer program, but you're probably wondering if you're the basketball coach the past three or four years. Man, I'm missing – because a lot of these girls are multi-sport athletes, and they're missing some quality players uh, for another couple, a week or two. Um, you, you know, girls basketball already starting, but as a as a school and a community like Ottawa Glendorf, you're, you're thrilled for that. You know, I'd I'd much rather have a few of my girls late making runs to the state tournament, seeing what it's like to get to that in, in, in any sport, uh, just to bring that competitive edge to my my winter program as well. Yeah, and let's not forget these Titans. They, they've made a run deep in the state playoffs for two consecutive years. In each of those years, they've made deep runs in the basketball right. state playoffs as well. And a lot of these girls, not all of them, but a lot of these girls are a part of that basketball team. Of course, 
Carson Erford, a key player on that squad. Micah Aldrich as well. Carly Brinkman playing significant minutes on the basketball court as well. Yeah, they just have that culture uh, in, in Ottawa. And, you know, as a as a f fellow WBL coach and or former coach, and, and and that's where to me, I tell some of our kids Eddie Light, it's like that's where we need to get. You know, everyone's bought in and and everyone's participating and and, and doing something. And, and you can just see that, especially right now in the girls' program. The the boys boys uh, have had a tough stretch here lately, and, and this year specifically in football and soccer, but but still competitive. Uh, but the girls, they're just they're just at a different level for this area in and, and, and women's sports as far as uh, I'm concerned. When you talk about community buy-in, it doesn't matter if you have someone, a, a, a relative or a child on a team, you may not have any connections, and you're going to the stadium or uh, wherever they might be playing or competing, and, and you're selling that place out. And it's so impressive to watch year in and year out the – Ottawa community, Glandorf community, uh, putting in so much time to support their young local athletes. Yeah, you mentioned the basketball side. I mean, that's obviously boys and girls side is just, yeah, every, every year. And, 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 yeah, the town shuts down <laughs> when they're in the tournament run. Bree Douglas shoots it right at Sierra and another nice save as she parries it away and out for a throw. Bree Douglas. A fantastic player in her own right, 14 goals. And I don't have the assist totals, but she leads the team in assists as well. 23. 23 assists, so assists. that's a lot of – yeah. I'm sure most of those have come off corners as well. So the Titans with a corner. They play it short, trying to maintain possession in the corner. That one's knocked away for a, a Titan throw. Yeah, we're looking at some of these Ottawa stats. When you can go five, six girls down and still have girls like uh, Emma Herringhouse scoring ten goals, uh, some of these teams are, you know, they're, they're only scoring 10, 20 goals a year uh, that OG's beating and competing against. And they have five, five, five six girls with at least, uh, uh, you know, with uh, double digits and goals. So Unbelievable. They know how to score and they know how to keep other teams from scoring. Another one into the box, another one into the goal. The Titans score their fifth at the 241 mark. Another Lee's famous recipe chicken goal lighting up the structure scoreboard are the Titans. That time scored by Mackenzie Recker. Recker with 17 goals coming into this one, so make it 18 for her. We've got goals from Seifker, Aldrich, and Recker, and I believe Bree Douglas. So the top four scorers right, right. on this squad have all scored. Three of those all first first team all league, and and, and yeah, you know, unfortunately, I was a defend, defender and and really am proud of defense. And unfortunately, though, when you are voting and and getting those all league and all district votes, a lot of times the the points and the goals and the, the you know the the points for, that you get for goals and assists that kind of combine to give you an overall number uh, outweigh just what, what defenders do. Because all you can say for defenders is, well, look, we've had, what, 10, 12 shutouts, which is very impressive. Unbelievable record for the Titans. And I don't have the official count in front of me, but I think they've only given up one or two shots on goal. The scoreboard says one. Trust that. So an unofficial one shot on goal for Riverdale. 13 for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. Here's Brinkman. Puts it in the midfield. Well, and even as dangerous or more dangerous of those 13, 13 shots, and, and we don't have the stat for this, but it's the amount of corner kicks, which we know is about to the oh, – as, sure. as we mentioned, another one's happening now. So. so with substitutions after the two-minute mark for the team that is ahead, the clock will stop. 123 on that clock as we get another corner. What can the Titans do with this one? Delaney Dooling will take. Four Titans on the back post. Now they run. And this one tight to the goal, knocked up into the air. Still, Still free. Moving. 
Still in front of the goal. Still in front and, and now another in one. the back of the net. Another Titan goal as they start pouring it on. Well, these famous recipe well, <laughs> chicken will be busy tonight. Well, we made these, you know, we, we said only having a couple goal, one or so go off the 20 corner kicks and then we say that and then about the last two or three corner kicks have been two or three goals. So they've kind of helped, helped that stat on goals to corner kicks ratio quite a bit this last 10 minutes. An interesting one for you. Number 21, Caitlin Reed, credited with the goal. She, according to the sheet that we have, has not scored a goal this year. So add another goal scorer for this Titan team. Which, that number alone is impressive. We were looking at that earlier. And the 16th. Jeez, 16. 16th goal scorer. You only play with 11 and one's a goalkeeper. Right, right. There's a shot into the edge of the box. When you mentioned some of these girls that, you know, I, I guess an advantage in some ways is some of these younger girls are getting playing time because a lot of their games throughout the year have have been pretty pretty lopsided. Um, and, and I'm sure on many squads, these girls are starting and playing significant minutes. They're just so, so uh, loaded up top with some of these juniors and seniors and even a sophomore too, so... 22 seconds on the clock. I want to thank our sponsors one more time this evening, our presenting sponsor and gold sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Check them out in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. And our scoreboard sponsor tonight was Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt Sweat Structure Outdoor. Bring your indoors out. And with that, that alt scoreboard at the final buzzer reads 5-0 in favor of the Ottawa Glandorf Titans as they move on to the regional final, just two games away from Columbus. Brady, your final thoughts on this one? Hey, uh, again, I, credit to Riverdale. They, they they stayed in it and hung, and, and then but but like we've seen a lot this year, uh, it just it was eventually ended up being too much. So credit to them, a good season, uh, but. Uh, I think OG's got farther farther sights on their mind, and, and good luck to them. And hopefully they can actually, you know, bring one home here. With hopefully third time's a charm. Again, your final five nothing Titans with the win. McKenna Seifker, Michael Aldrich, Mackenzie Record, Bree Douglas, and Caitlin Reed, the goal scorers this evening. I want to thank the Shawnee Athletic Department for their hospitality this evening, and as always, want to thank you, the viewer for tuning in to High School Sports on WOSN. For Jacob Hot Dog O'Neill out on the camera and my partner Brady Overholt, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless. <laughs>